The fingers are back. Fingers are back. Fingers are back. <laughs> Silent night. <laughs> <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells. I don't get it. I don't get a Christmas story. Unwrap this episode. We start having so much fun on the episode that like I forget that there's going to be people that are actually watching us. And like, I don't know if they're going to think it's funny or not, or it's just us laughing. And they're just like, they went off the rails again. This is why when I'm editing it, I'm like, I got to throw in something now where it's like, it's just going to be me and Daniel going off and yeah. just be prepared for us to go off on a rant. That's why it's like That's it. yeah. an incoming what... Daniel Murray rant. Is coming. Yes. This is why I wish we had comments more from our listeners. Cause like, clearly there's, there's, we have people that keep coming back to us and they don't comment. It's like, do you guys like this? Do you not like this? Like, tell us if you guys find this part annoying, tell us and we'll just cut it out. We're not going to stop doing it, but like, tell us. They're not even inside jokes. They're just things. No, they're, they're not even jokes. They're just, <laughs> they're just words, a series of words. We're so stupid. From movies to video games, welcome to Marie Plays It All. Today's episode is a side quest. Daniel's first side quest. I'm the side piece in this episode. Yay. Yep. <laughs> Yay. I've, I've always Daniel. had admirations to be a side piece. So here I am getting fulfilled, getting checked that off the, <laughs> the long list to accomplish for my life. Off your Christmas list? Be a side piece. Off my Yay. Christmas list. Hey, there's only one way to be naughty. You're definitely getting some coal for that one. Today's side quest I was inspired by your episode of um, uh, overrated comedies. Little choke that you didn't put super bad on there, but whatever, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? There's some really overrated Christmas movies out there and some that are really cherished by people. And I'm just, I, I personally, I don't get it. There's some that Daniel personally probably doesn't get. I mean, this is pretty uh, subjective, very there subjective. Uh, and, and this is just, yes, this is just my personal feelings and Daniel's personal feelings. There's one that I think is really overrated and it's super popular and it's on my list kind of, but I don't know how to defend that. I think it's overrated. I just think it is, but I don't know why I think it is, but I'm going to, I'll mention it. Yes. And anytime we talk about these type of episodes, it's always subjective, except in this episode, it's not subjective. It is facts. These movies are overrated, period. And no ifs, ands, or buts. I, okay, well, I think I think <laughs> I'm kidding, that I'm I'm gonna just, I might disagree with one that you say. I feel like you think that one is overrated. I don't know why. I think I heard you say this before, and I think that I love mm -hmm. it. But we're gonna find out. But my first question yes. for you, Daniel, is a very important yes. question that I must know okay. the answer to. Yes, I do. Okay, good. That's good to know because my follow up question to that is: <laughs> which, which Christmas movies do you have to watch every year that are you don't feel underrated that are special to you and you like have to watch okay. them every year? Fair enough. So the first, okay. So the, your question was actually going to be if I actually watch movies that I have to every year. Was that, was that no, your first was, question? Yeah. It, my first question was going to be, are there Christmas movies that you traditionally feel like you do watch every year? You answered it without me asking. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I did. So. Cause I just assumed, but all right. So there's a few, one of them is a Christmas story, which TNT plays all the time. And it's something we watched as kids. And as you know, uh, we didn't live in an age where there was streaming services. So you watch what was being played on television or your mass amount of VHS cassette tapes. So rather than going and putting that in, uh, the Christmas story would always be played. So that's one of them. Another one is A Nightmare Before Christmas. I love that movie. So I always had to watch it before Christmas at some point. A Christmas story has to be enjoyed on Christmas Day. And then I have a bunch cool. of other movies that I love watching, but those ones are, the, are like the staples that have to be in there rather than me listing off like 20 different Christmas movies. Perfect. Good answer. <laughs> How about you? Um, also Christmas story. Mm -hmm. Uh, ever since I was a kid, that's my right. mom. That's whoop, right. Whoop. Shoot your <laughs> eye out, bitch. Um, so that is such a staple in my family. My mom adores that movie. We have a Christmas story mm -hmm. Monopoly game at her house. I think I bought her like Christmas ornaments for the tree. It's like the fragile box and the leg lamp and everything and the Ralphie's face. And it's just that's a and huge do you guys Christmas. have do you guys have the Easter Bunny costume that you guys have to pass around and somebody has to wear it differently each year? I'm assuming your brother. Please tell me your brother has worn that costume at one point in his life. Yes, Rob does have it. And he, <laughs> he 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 wears it when he goes on his like I gotta watch what I say on these episodes now because I'm gonna get flagged. He 
when he goes on vengeance sprees, that's what he wears. There should that, that's like vengeance there, should, there, okay. there should be a horror movie with that bunny involved. Absolutely, there. Well, there there's a slight one. So if you've seen, did you ever see Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey? No. Okay. Well, we'll just put a pin in that. Yeah. For anybody that's seen it, you know my reference. Okay. Uh, also, no, my brother does not have that money suit, but I'm sure he, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he would wear it, though. I think I would wear it, too. Another one for sure that I watch every year is The Family Man with Nicolas Cage. I watch it every single year. Actually. I think it's like the most heartwarming but heartbreaking Christmas movies. I don't tear up, man. Thinking about it, Christmas movies ever. Nicolas Cage is so good and so over the top sometimes in that movie and there's just the, there's a hit the little no. daughter in that movie and Nicolas Cage what what um <laughs> uh his little daughter in that movie is just and the last one that I feel like I I really have to watch every year is Home Alone mm. Home Alone is just yeah with the kids yeah. just like watch that one yeah because they mm. I just got them into it last year and now it's like now they want to watch it mm. every year the biggest travesty still in Home Alone is the fact that he doesn't even taste his mac and cheese. That looks so delicious. I mentioned that before. It's like, it looks so delicious when they put it down. Picture-esque. And he never even touches it. Picks it up, about to, and doesn't eat it. Yeah, but it's kind of weird that he's, like, planning this whole thing for this night to, like, entrap these crooks and then he makes his gourmet meal and forgets that the time is coming and sits down gets all set up and he's like oh yeah it's the stuff i've been working for this whole time oh yeah it's time <laughs> well the surprise them. they were five minutes early he actually had them booked uh, for five minutes later and they just showed up you know oh. they're being pleasant okay business etiquette okay daniel let's let's, let's get into it i want to know i'm <laughs> back on track know. before i start off with this we have to like set it up a little bit right because how would we classify like overrated christmas movies right like is does a movie how would you classify as a christmas movie let's start off that like do you say just a movie centered around christmas is it a movie that's set on christmas even if the plot lines don't necessarily have to do with that in particular there's a lot of ways you can take this right so how how do you classify mm -hmm. it pretty much any movie that takes place around christmas time and has any sort of christmas elements in it at any point is a christmas movie to me Batman Returns, Christmas movie. Edward Scissorhands, Christmas movie. Die Hard, that was watched last night for the very first time. Christmas movie. When Eat you're it, in Sally. Eat it, George. I'm pretty, I'm pretty loosey-goosey with the, you know, if it gives me any sort of Christmas vibe inside, I'm like, I'm watching it at Christmas. Okay. So if you're loosey-goosey, I'm a little righty-tighty on this. So I feel like when it comes to Christmas movies, we had a whole episode that was dedicated last year where we went through the different things that a Christmas movie needs to have. It needs to be obviously around Christmas. So either mm -hmm. I think it was a day or two before that you would have to have and you would have to at some point see Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. You have to have one of those, right? Because you can always set up where it's Christmas Eve and it's Christmas Day the next day and the movie ends, but it's still centered around Christmas. You also have to have some form of Christmas music played in the mo movie, whether that be on the soundtrack or whether that be in playing on set and you see it in one of the scenes that they're playing in the background. Having you know said that, Christmas movies have become a staple of a lot of families and a lot of families make it a tradition as we just discussed about which ones we make tradition. Now, there's some movies that are um, not as great that people have made a tradition for who knows why. And we're here to crush those, <laughs> to crush those dreams, turn your present into a coal and say why it's not that great. I can argue, though, because some of the movies I have on here would be classified as great movies. I just think they're overrated because maybe I just don't get it. I just don't get that hype around these movies. I watch it and I'm like, yeah, but I don't see the big like, boom. like I just don't and I don't I don't feel compelled to watch it every year. I don't see it. But then maybe the ones that I watch every year I watch because it has sentimental value for me and I watched it when I was a kid and then someone can be like a oh, Christmas story is so overrated because they watch it as an adult, not as a kid. They're like, this is stupid. So that's why I say it's yes. objective. It is. And a lot of people have a Christmas story as overrated AF. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I get it, but it has that magical feel. And that's what we can talk about. Like, what do we look for in Christmas movies? Right. We kind of look for like that magical feel. There's always some kind of redemption arc to some extent of a character. Right. If you kind of go mm -hmm. from like the Scrooge to all of a sudden loving Christmas, there has to be some kind of redemption. There's got to get the warm and fuzzies. And there also needs to be some either really hilarious or really cool action of some sort but there needs to be some cool scenes in this that kind of gives you a little bit of something so it's not just a very flat hallmark christmas movie now if you have a hallmark movie on your list 
my apologies, but because they released, I feel like half of their content of Hallmark movies are Christmas movies. Yeah, and I have never seen a single Hallmark movie or Hallmark Christmas movie ever. I haven't either. I haven't either. And they film a lot of them, a schlot of them in a my city. A schlot of them. A Do ton they. of them are. Oh, yeah. That's like we're like the capital of Hallmark Christmas movies. But it's like the winter's so long and it's so wintry that they're mm-hmm. filmed here all the time. I think there's one going on right now. I just drove down the street and there's a big production going on. I'm like, this is yep. a Hallmark Christmas movie. And it's cheaper production to to film it out there in Canada. <laughs> you just play those cheap. doublooms, and you guys are good. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna pay you. And are you guys? Do you accept doubloons? Yeah, yeah, we do. We're struggling here at Hallmark. So, <laughs> who has changed for doublooms? There you go. Oh, that's enough to film three more Hallmark movies. Hallmark cards are like eleven dollars here for a card. Yeah, because that's what funds the production of the movies. It is. It, they're yeah. so expensive. Like I, I, oh man, I think cards are such a waste of money, man. Like I never want to get yeah. like a card. Like write me a write me a note. Like just be like Merry Christmas. Post it. That's it. <laughs> Post it. Would you be offended if I did that and I wrote in the back of a receipt? Like you guys don't have CVSs, but the joke in America is that. Oh, do you guys have CVSs? No, but I know the long receipts. Yeah. yeah. So if I just gave you one of those and just run the back of it, sup X X hyphen M A S hyphen D. Would that be magical to you? I would rather you do that than spend eleven dollars on a card. Yeah. Nice. I would. Okay. There you go. Good to know. See? Yeah. That's why we're friends. Yeah. But I also <laughs> I also would expect the whole back of the receipt to be written as to why a relationship means a lot to you. That is what I'd want. So what do you do? You'd rather spend eleven dollars. I know. I get it. Yeah, there you go. At least it has a Christmas tree cut out in the cover. Give me your first movie. Okay. I want to know what it so is. The... I'm dying. Okay. How do you define overrated Christmas movie? Is it just movies that we just don't think are that good, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't know. This is what I mean by overrated. Like we just there's stuff about it. Like okay, when you guys okay, are overrated okay. comedy, like yeah. some of you liked it, some of you didn't. So it's just personal preference. Okay. Okay. It, here's how I'll do this then. So because I have one that I've already mentioned and I'd rather not. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather save a controversial talk for my third one. Okay. So let, let's go with my second one. Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2, overrated. I enjoy the movie. Okay, I enjoy it. It's fun. I'll watch it sometimes. Loved it more as a kid. Doesn't hold up as much now. But outside of the talkback recording device that he had, there's not much. um, It just felt flat. It felt like they just repeated themselves again. It seems so unrealistic that these sticky bandits would now find him outside of a store that just happened to be walking again. The fact that he gets lost again by the family and is stuck in New York is so unbelievable. He has his dad's credit card that he keeps using and the hotel managers like it's so obvious that he's there by himself there's so many un- uh, unbelievable things in this one the first one you can kind of believe right like you know the, you see the whole head counting they counted the wrong kid's head they can't fly back because of blizzard i can i can kind of see it the second one and then you throw us the pigeon lady so like the pigeon lady's like really bad <laughs> and at the end she's homeless right he gives her a um what is it, like a pigeon or something or a dove Tournament you know, and turtle love. yeah, turtle. Dove, there you go. And it's like, we're going to be friends forever. That doesn't help her. It doesn't help her eat. <laughs> like, he could have gotten her a job somewhere or done something to help her bounce off her feet or even invited her inside with his family when they're all there to celebrate Christmas. You could have gotten her out of the cold. You didn't do that, did you? Kevin McAllister. So that movie, even though I love Tim Curry in it. It just felt so commercialized on this one. And there was nothing of real substance like the first one had with the real magic behind it. I agree. I don't wa- I don't feel compelled to watch that one every year. I just, I don't know. I do like the setting. I do like the um, the hotel setting. I do like the Christmas in New York setting, the toy, the toy store and everything. The setting, I think, is really nice. But again, yes, very unbelievable. And also... Like his dad gets so mad at him for using his credit card. It's like, what did you want him to do? Not eat, not live. You're rich. You're loaded. Yeah. So no, what are you going to say? The dad owns this immaculate home. The wife, I don't think works. So it's like, what does the dad do? And there's all these like funny theories and jokes that they make that the dad's some kind of a dealer of some sorts, because it's like, Mm -hmm. how can he afford all this? 
But it's not again, it's not that the second movie's bad. I do go back and watch it sometimes. It's just it's overrated because it ended up spawning three more sequels. Marie, they made well, three more movies after these. I know. I mean, Granted, it's not the same character. I, I know, but I'm just saying it's ridiculous. When you had the first one, it would have, you know, of course, it's still a classic, but it would have just stayed as is. Yeah. Like sort of like the way Ferris Bueller was, where it was just a one off. Yeah. The second the by having the sequel. And now open up the idea of, well, let's have a three, four, and five. If you wouldn't have had a second one, maybe they wouldn't have done a three, four, five, and it would have just stayed as one. Yeah, I think Home Alone should have been a one-off. Absolutely. Especially when you grow up and then you actually have kids, you're like, no, that would never happen again. Not again. <laughs> or in the first place. But obviously, yeah. never again. Okay, I'm I'm going to go with one that you guys like and that I've seen on a lot of social media like praise for it like a lot mm -hmm. and i just watched it for the first time like last week or two weeks ago and i was like this is going to be great everyone says i'm going to love it and that one is krampus mm, you I, like it i did not like krampus like adam scott almost, huh? you hate adam scott you look at his face I and love, you want to punch him i love adam scott you I put love him in a stocking? Him. no i hate tony yeah. collette that's why and like she's, she's you hate her as an sucks. actress or you hate her as her oh, character just both she's terrible no are you tony serious Clay. no tony <laughs> collette like, you know i love tony yeah you know, i know I that's all like who are you right now <laughs> uh <laughs> the grid the evil christmas elf yeah, the grid, yeah. <laughs> so last night i thought that i was really gonna think that national lampoon's christmas vacation is gonna be overrated i never watched it i watched like little parts of it on tv when i was younger i've seen i think like one of the vacations i was younger and i'm like oh i'm gonna hate this one um yeah aspects i hate but i watched it last night and i was like oh this isn't overrated i actually liked it and it was eat funny it george <laughs> eat it george is another one that said it was overrated he hates it and he doesn't like chevy chase at all and i'm like dude the movie's funny Granted, your issue was my issue too. As I got older, yes. I like ended up liking the movie, but I'm watching the movie and I already thought Krampus was overrated. And then there's stuff that Krampus just legit stole from the Christmas vacation, like the whole advent calendar doors opening. I'm like, hey man, they already did this. And then also the whole redneck family member coming in and like this like annoying redneck person but then also has kind of caring and has like a good heart in a sense okay so Cram so i'm watching Krampus, his sound right? his character sound resembled a lot like cousin eddie exactly yeah. to a t yes yes so i was like krampus get your own ideas so when i was <laughs> watching when i'm watching krampus i'm like hey this is first of all the cast is like pretty sounding i was like all right this is going to be so good and like tony collette is just our heart beats tony 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 so or colette whatever either either or um <laughs> just tony 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 <laughs> our palpitations tony 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 um okay so i thought that they were setting this movie up to be something totally different and then they didn't go anywhere with what they were saying like adam scott's character is saying to his like redneck uh clearly republican democratic Rash, like clashing family of course he had to really throw that in there and shove it down your throat um mm -hmm. but anyway uh i was he was talking about how he was in boy scouts i thought they were setting up the whole boy scout thing to have like some sort of a payoff well like home alone type trap set up and they're gonna get krampus and that never came to fruition that's the word right mm -hmm. at all not at all. And I'm like, well, why talk about that? Why was I even part of the story unless you're going to do something with it? And, okay, and then the possessed toys, I was like, okay, is this a Krampus thing? Like, is this like a thing about Krampus? Does he make toys possessed? Is that in the lore? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So at first I'm like, okay, this is pretty stupid. This gingerbread thing is pretty stupid. But then halfway through it got funny and I was like, oh, okay, I see what is going. And I thought it was really funny. And that clown thing was kind of creepy, like the Jack in the Box thing. But guess what? But it reminded me kind of like uh, Poltergeist, right? With the clown. Exactly. They really took a bunch of stuff. And another thing with the parents, like, I don't care what it is like outside. You're not just going to be like, oh, our daughter's out there. Oh, I heard her screaming. Like, you're just going to stay in the house. Parent would do that. 
maybe out there. I don't know. I just did not like Krampus. I didn't like the story. Krampus was not what I wanted. I wanted him to be like an actually scary, menacing, dangerous, attacking people Krampus. Mm. Not like this quiet, this like, I don't know. I Krampus yeah. wasn't scary in it. I, I I just thought it was overrated. I really didn't like it. I was like, this is not. <laughs> No, it's not a good Christmas movie or a good horror movie. I didn't. It didn't give me warm and fuzzies. It didn't make me scared. I I just didn't like it. Yeah. So this one was like a co comedy horror. I like Krampus. You know, I mentioned it before. I like it. I don't love love Krampus. So I understand what you're talking about. It's one that I've seen maybe three times in my life. It's one that I don't have to watch every Christmas. It's one that I'll probably go back to a few more times. But it's it's uh, I, I see what you're talking about. Um, I like it because it's kind of fun. It's different. I kind of like the the comedy horror, you know, uh, when they pull that off pretty well. I like movies that are like that. We don't get enough of comedy horrors that are done well. It's either really cheesy, bad horror movies that they try to add funny into it because they have a low budget and it just doesn't execute. This one I thought did pretty good. I like the actors that are in it, um, but I see what you're talking about. So I understand. It felt like a low, low budget idea with a high as a high budget movie. Yes. Like the idea yes. was not good. It wasn't executed right. And I thought that they were really going to have like the family differences and the difference in like um, politics and stuff. And they're going to come together and they're going to defeat Krampus. And it's like that's showing like you have differences, which is what the dad is saying to the kid in the beginning. Anyway, you have your differences, but you come together and you can prevail through things, which is amazing. Warning. It didn't happen. And then everyone just is dead and everyone just dies and they're in a snow globe. Whatever. Krampus, get out of here. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, spoiler alert. She doesn't alert, care. Still, uh, She's playing Krampus right now. She's going to ruin your Christmas. So the one that I consider the most overrated, but I'm not going to count this as one of my options, is the Polar Express. I think that is oh, okay. by far the most overrated Christmas movie just because it's so hyped and people make this a huge tradition for themselves. And I think the movie just doesn't hold up. The animation was something new at the time, but it looks so weird and creepy now. The story feels completely flat. The characters feel flat. Outside of Tom Hanks trying to do his thing, the rest of the movie just feels bland. And the book was good as a kid. They try to stretch it out for a whole movie, and it just doesn't feel like that. I have full more details about this on another episode. <laughs> it's not a strong start. That's why I didn't want to count this as one of my choices. I wanted to pick a new selection for your side quest episode. Okay. I've never okay. seen Polar Express, so. Good. You can keep it that way if you want. Okay. Good. Okay. Good to <laughs> yeah. know. All right. Um, I picked a movie called Christmas with the Cranks. So <laughs> Christmas with the Cranks. With the... <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's got Tim Allen, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Dan Aykroyd in it. Okay, it just okay. made with a bunch of cheap laughs and made Christmas feel more commercialized. So it didn't feel mm. very Christmassy. The idea is that these these parents, their daughters, you know, away on Christmas and she's supposed to be spending it with, I think, her boyfriend or something. So they were like, well, we're going to cancel Christmas. I'm just going to go on this exotic cruise ship. Well, then the sisters or the daughters like, OK, I'm going to come back home for the holidays. So now they're trying to hurry up and build Christmas because they I guess they have like these uh traditional Christmas parties that they put on every year and they canceled it. Their neighborhood was upset. So now they're trying to hurry up and cram Christmas into this short amount of time. The movie itself, though, it's just it feels like that. It doesn't feel super Christmassy. It just filled with a bunch of cheap laughs. It feels like a script. It's one of those movies that reads like a script. And then you plugged in these actors and like they're they're trying their best. Like they even have a big joke about how Tim Allen gets Botox and he can't emote through his face. What does that okay. have to do <laughs> while he's tanned? Like, what does that have to do with Christmas? So it's a very right. un-Christmassy Christmas movie. And that's the problem that I have with it. Some people love it and they'll watch it and they play it a lot around Christmas time. I just didn't really see the magic behind it. Between those three actors, you would imagine the movie would be better. And I think they try to capitalize off of Tim Allen doing the Santa Claus. So they're like, oh, you know, he's becoming the king of Christmas. So they tried it with this one. And it was like, no, nope, no, he didn't. Because with the cranks, I was very cranky while watching that movie. <laughs> ah? Were you waiting ah? for that? He's waiting. No, I, I literally just came up with it. I was talking midway and I was like, oh, I'm going to use that. Marie's going to love it. <laughs> She's going to love it. I loved it. Love. <laughs> loved it. I've never seen it. I never wanted to. I never will. Probably. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Good. Yeah. So that I didn't sell you right now. It. You didn't hear oh, me saying, oh, that sounds amazing. Let me watch that. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I just never, there's a certain type of things. I'm just like, I don't need that in my life. And I, I always just mm. felt Christmas with the cranks. I wasn't necessary for me. Please don't disown me for this next one. Please still write on the back of a CVS receipt for Better me. not be Die Hard. No, that actually, I love Die Hard. It was good. A Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't know why. Because on paper, I should love this movie. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't. Personally, I know. I should love this movie because it's like written by Tim Burton. It's Halloween. It's... Yeah. What? Which you part? said written by Tim Burton. I said, eh. Yeah. It was. It, it is, but the, yeah. produced. And, re and I read it was written by him it, and, and someone came else. Up with, yes, but they... Okay, so there's a lot of stuff behind this, right? Everybody assumes yeah. Tim Burton directed the no. Nightmare Before Christmas. No, but that's what everybody assumed. And a lot uh -huh. of people still in life think that. So I thought that for the longest time when I was a kid, he produced it. And it was his image, right? It was his animation. Mm -hmm. And he had the idea to do it. Then he got booked. I believe it was for Batman Returns. So when yeah. he went to go do that, they started production on this one. And the way that it works is they kind of work backwards on this one where Danny Elfman would be writing the music without knowing what the scenes were written. So he would mm. send it in and they would write around the music. So that's why when you said written by Tim Burton, I'm like, eh, not really, because he yeah. wasn't there writing the scenes when the stuff was done. Yeah, yeah influence parts partially, maybe not no, no, no. fully, but like, yes, yeah. yes. And that's what I mean. So it's not a very clear given yeah. It's not a it's not your traditional Tim Burton movie is what I'm saying. So if mm -mm. you felt disconnected from it, I'm saying I can understand why, because he's not the one that was creatively behind it from beginning to end. Maybe that's why I it doesn't resonate. I don't know why it doesn't resonate with me, but I do kind of. But I watched it for the first time in like my early 20s and it was already like a cult classic for people. And I was like, I'm going to love this movie. Halloween, Christmas, my two favorites and um, like Tim Burton-esque and like gothic creepy. Um, and I just, there's something about this movie that is so off-putting. I don't know what it is, if it's the flow of it. I don't like the voices. I don't really like the voice acting. I don't like any of the songs. I just, there's, I, I watched this movie and I'm like, yeah, okay. And let's watch it recently because my daughter wanted to watch it. And I'm like, cool, yeah, maybe it, you know, I grew up, I'm going to like it more now that I'm old. And I'm just like, nah, man, I just can't get, I can't get into it. I can find myself wanting it to end. Like, I'm just like, it's boring to me. Uh, it's ugly looking to me. None of the characters are appealing at all to me. I just really don't see the appeal of Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't get it. I like that other people like it. There's people out there that actually have crushes on Jack Skellington. I don't know. I don't understand this Crushes movie. on Jack Skellington. Yes. I've seen like things like brushes and I'm like, oh, I know. I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get a Christmas story. It, it's, it, 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 a night, sorry. I don't get a nightmare before Christmas. I, get, <laughs> I, like, I get a Christmas story. I get a Christmas story. I get that one. But yeah, no, I don't, I don't understand it. I, it doesn't feel Christmassy or Halloweeny or anything to me. Okay, so let me play a, a defense on that because that's always fun. Mm -hmm. So you said it doesn't feel hollow uh, Christmassy, right? That's the point of the movie, in my opinion, is that it's not. It, it's a character that's Halloween that's trying to fit Christmas into that. So it seems like a dysfunction. So if you sit there and you think, "What well, doesn't really feel like a Halloween movie either?" Because it's not a Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. You have a character that's disjointed from his reality and his world that's trying to emulate and copy the idea of Christmas, sort of like a Grinch when Grinch, he dresses up as Santa and goes around and steals the, you know, the, the kid's presents. It's kind of like a warped version of that. Um, I think it's Danny Elfman still doing good music. Now, is it mu music that I sit there and I play like on my, you know, Alexa or something like that? No, it's not the normal Christmas movie that I, you know, or music that I sit there and listen to, but I still like the, it has that Tim Burton look to me and feel, which is always creepy. Like his stuff never looks happy or joyous, right? It doesn't look like Disney, which is ironic because he used to work for Disney way back in the day, but it, it's supposed to look weird and more, more morbid and like warped and things like that. That's kind of why I really like the, the look of it. It seemed like it would read very well if it was a children's book and you saw the animation and the illustration for it. 
it does have a more slower move to it. So I understand the boring part of it because there are parts where I'm like, okay, you know, let's speed this up a little bit. But I think a lot of that too is the reason it is based off of them writing the story after getting the music. I think that's mm -hmm. maybe what some of it is. So they're sort of like have time to fill before they get to their next, you know, music, maybe perhaps, I, I don't know. I thought the, even though there's, they're super ugly looking characters, I thought the mad scientist guy was a really cool creation. Even mm -hmm. Sally, the idea of like the stitching and, and like a doll that's sort of falling apart and she stitched together. I think there's some cool ideas behind this and some good metaphors for the characters. So I can see the appeal there. And again, like I've said, it makes great merchandise for the goth kids shopping at Hot Topic. Hot Topic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like a cash grab on merchandise. So I understand the appeal there, but I get what you're saying. I'm actually surprised you didn't like that one as much because it does seem right up your alley. All right, but, I know. Yeah, It surprises me. It's a, it's a, it surprised me every time I've watched it. It surprises me that I, I, I feel like I need to force myself to like it. So I'm like, you should like this, Marie. This is your, this is your thing. This is totally you. But like you say, this is why I'm saying this is an overrated Christmas movie. For me, a lot of people watch it around Christmas time. You said you watch it every Christmas time. For me, I don't, it's for, as a Christmas movie, overrated. Fair enough. That's what I'm saying. We have to go bold on these takes. We have to go bold. We got to piss off listeners that way they go back in the thing to talk about how Marie's such a dumb dumb you want to see that <laughs> yeah this one I think definitely is going to piss people off because, especially because like I I'm like I'm like a horror type creepy type person and it's like this mm -hmm. didn't do it for me yeah okay and Krampus okay. too interesting I know yeah. but there are Christmas movies yeah. okay. that are horror that I love right. but they not these all right so here's my third one so this one's a little bit of a uh different than the pros that i took right because the other one was going to be polar express but i already quickly briefly explained my reasons for polar express which i think is the most overrated one okay yeah. but so with this one i'm going with it's a wonderful life have you seen it's a wonderful life no okay that's fine so i'll, I'll explain it then so it's a wonderful life is a newer movie that i have really started to watch recently and i've seen it twice within the past maybe two years i want to say before that, as a kid, I would just hit bits and pieces of it, and I didn't really know anything about it. And I just remember uh, famous little scenes that would pop up in other movies that they would reference. The reason why I say it's an overrated Christmas movie is because I really appreciate it as a film, and I think it's a really good film. I don't really see or classify it as a Christmas movie. Now, I say that because even though the ending is happening on Christmas Day, the whole movie is based around a guy's life, and the ultimate final resolve around his life is the guy had ambitions and dreams of becoming something. And he had to keep sacrificing his dreams for the betterment of others to the point where it made him bitter and it made him uh, angry towards life. So he became a bitter older man towards his family. Mm -hmm. So he wishes that he never existed at that point until he has a an angel that shows him in his life how it would have affected other li other people's lives and how their lives wouldn't have been better, how it would have made it worse, right? Okay. Okay. So you see that, and then at the end of the resolution, it's it's him coming to terms with, oh, then I should keep sacrificing myself and my dreams for the betterment of others. And that's sort of the resolution in the movie, which I think is a very, very bad takeaway. <laughs> like That's not what you should do, your dreams and your desires and ambitions is what fueled you as a person as an individual and he probably would have done greater things for himself specifically and that could have probably impacted other people in their lives but i still really love the film i say it's overrated because it's not really a christmas movie like the yeah. even just the premise that i mentioned what did that have to do with christmas right like his his, his effect and ability on other people's lives is not impacted by Christmas. It's not like every time we go to these memories, it's around Christmas. Christmas doesn't really play a main theme in the movie outside of what, like a guardian angel, but angels don't just come around Christmas time. So <laughs> that's why when I see the movie, that feels more like a forced Christmas movie to me than Die Hard. That's why when we talked about, oh, yeah. you know, with George, where George mentions Die Hard is not a Christmas movie to him. It's just an action movie because you can take the plot line and apply it to any other day. I'm like, yeah, but they had an office party. The office mm -hmm. party was a Christmas party. And then you mentioned about how it's snowing. And then even some of the effects of the other characters, 
were affected because of Christmas around that. That's why you had Carl Winslow there picking up the night shift. And he was the one that was responding to him because of Christmas. Those was factors <laughs> that played into Christmas. In this one, you had a guy's bitter, bitter lack of desire of throughout his life that made that towards everybody else that was affected by his dreams and everything else, having get it pulled and ripped away from him over and over. That has nothing to do with Christmas. So the movie, I freaking love the movie and I have a, a very profound appreciation for it more in my adult life because as the average person or adults, we grow up feeling having these dreams and these desires that don't always flourish. Right. And for the most, for the majority of people and adults, we never, that never comes into fruition. It's very sad when you look at it that way. And you can almost very, not only sympathize, but you can almost empathize with this character. But it doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. So that's why when people say, oh, I'll watch it around Christmas, I'm like, you can watch this in June. You can watch this in March. <laughs> like, yeah. it doesn't really have anything to do with Christmas other than the final scene taking place really in Christmas and they try to make it a theme around but even when you're watching the upbringing of this character it's not Christmas it's not happening around Christmas time it's happening all over the place hmm. you know what I mean like sure there, there are scenes where there's snow and stuff but it again it doesn't really have to do with Christmas it's not like a Christmas is the main theme to the story and Christmas is the reason why he lost his desire or dream that has nothing to do with Christmas <laughs> that's me standing on a soapbox yeah. right but but a wonderful uh, life you, you've heard that right it's synonymous with christmas right every time a bell rings an angel gets his wings is that it yeah yeah that's the one yeah okay yeah yeah but but, yeah, but when you movie. hear christmas movies you always hear it's a wonderful life right you associate yeah. it with christmas yeah yeah that's why i think it's an overrated christmas movie because it, it's it's not all the other movies we talk about is centered usually around christmas christmas is a bigger mm. theme of the movie this movie the theme is not christmas it's the man's dream and desires being slipped away from his fingers because he's having to put others before him which turns him into a bitter man and like sort of like a scrooge I still recommend it because I think the actor Jimmy Stewart is unbelievable in it, like unbelievable okay. in the movie. But it's just it just feels overrated as a Christmas movie. Okay. So if I do watch it, I can I'll watch it in June. Is what you're saying? Yeah, or March. My okay, controversial. I, okay. It is controversial because it is very Christmassy in a lot of ways. I mean, there's parts in the movie where you're watching it and you'd be like, this does. You wouldn't be able to tell it was a Christmas movie, but as a whole, it's a Christmas movie. But I just, there's things about this movie that I'm just like, what? Okay. Anyway, the movie is Love Actually. This is not only like a cherished Christmas movie, but romance movie. And so many people in this movie are just horrible human beings. They're horrible. And I love, I get that it's like British humor, um, because British humor is like darker more like not I don't know, dry but I love British humor okay I do I love it yeah but there's something about it in this movie where it's just like it makes the a lot of the characters unlikable who's and in it I'm it, trying to see who's in it Hugh Grant, oh, Hugh Grant. got it Liam okay. Neeson the, the 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 cast is enormous Kira Knightley Andrew Laura Lincoln Linney. Laura, Laura Linney friggin okay um, Colin um, Firth Colin Firth the guy Emma Thompson, who Emma yes. Thompson, Hans Gruber is in it. Martin Freeman, yep. The cast Got is it. amazing. Kira Knightley, Kira Knightley, yeah, young Kira Knightley. She, okay, Kira Knightley was 18 in this movie, and you're meant to believe she's a full grown woman getting married. It's kind of but it's okay, <laughs> but yeah, I don't really know. I took a bunch of notes about it, like how Emma Thompson's character, I don't, I don't even really know who Liam Neeson is to her in this movie. I was trying to figure it out. So everyone's pretty connected in this movie and you find out like throughout the movie and at the end, like how everyone's connected. But Liam Neeson's wife just died, just died. And he's left with her son. He's his stepdad. And Emma Thompson, her exact words to him when he's like, I've no one else to talk to. And he's like all upset and crying. Her exact words to him are get a grip, People hate sissies. No one is going to shag you if you cry all the time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she she says this to him after his wife Gus died. I don't know if the funeral happened yet. And he's crying to her. He's left with her son. He doesn't know how to be a dad. 
And this is what she says. And then and then stuff happens with her husband. She got that from a fortune cookie. (laughs) Well, like just yeah, in in Britain, that's what the fortune cookies say. Uh, And then um, Alan Rickman, that's his name, right? Mm, Yeah, Hans Gruber. Seeing this too. He's married to her. He's married to her and he's enticed by like his coworker secretary woman. He never actually has an affair with her, I don't think, but he ends up like buying her a Christmas present. And I'm <laughs> I'm watching the movie and I'm like, you know what, Emma Thompson, maybe if you weren't such a cold hearted shrew, your husband would be enticed. It's so wrong to say. Which is so like I mean, like what? But then but then she grow but then she grows on you a little bit. But then like I'm like, God damn it, like how do you connect with somebody and like stay romantic and passionate about somebody anyway if they're like that? It's just like this awful, awful person, it seems like. Anyway, all the a lot of the men in this movie are just like these bubbling idiots and just awkward. And I'm like, these are all and they're all getting these model women. I'm like, okay. I mean, like, so then <laughs> Colin Colin Firth's character is unlucky in love he's an author and he ends up having this like assistant woman who can't speak english for two weeks and he ends up proposing to her at the end this movie should be called lust actually lust actually it's not love there is love aspects in this movie but it's nothing to do with romance for the most part it's all lust actually (laughs) marie dempsey's review of love actually love not actually (laughs) you did not love this movie well, it's it's just, and then there's like Hugh Grant is a prime minister, and he has this other like assistant woman, and she's like cute and has a nice body, and everyone keeps calling her fat and chubby. I'm like, what is this movie? What is this movie that I'm watching? It's like depressing. What does that have to do with Christmas? Outside of Alan Rickman buying his secretary a Christmas present. Okay, there's some parts of the story, like there's a whole bunch of storylines happening at once, and there's some parts of it where it's nothing to do with Christmas at all. Like all these couples getting together and stuff. It's nothing to do with Christmas. Nothing. Oh, they paint Americans to be terrible, by the way. The president of the United States is Billy Bob Thornton, and he's a pervy asshole. And then they Naturally. paint all American. Yeah, they paint all American women as stupid, sauce, just dumb. Sauce. Naturally. Just <laughs> <laughs> sleep I'm with kidding. anybody, and they're all they're all stupid. Yeah, so so that's their portrayal. That's why I said naturally on Americans, because that's how they view Americans. It it, it is, and I, not, not that it's an act, not, not that it's reality. I'm just saying that's how they view Americans. Yeah, yeah, it, it is, and I, there's just so many things about this movie where it's like I don't like the people, and it it doesn't make sense for like true love. I'm trying to think about like a true love aspect of this movie. I guess Martin, what's his name? Martin, Martin Freeman. Is that his name? Like the, yeah. the guy who's in The Hobbit? His yeah. storyline is like cute, <laughs> but it's like unnecessary. I don't know. And then and then there's a the whole Kira Knightley thing where she's married to this guy's best friend and then the guy and then the best friend comes and like holds all the signs up and telling her that he's in love with her on Christmas while his best friend's in the house. And then she goes out and she gives him a kiss. I'm like, I just, I'm like I... not buying it. I'm not buying it. And then there's a whole other story about this pop star, little sorry, a rock star writing a Christmas song. And he's just a terrible person. And I just. So is he trying to find the meaning of Christmas and like lighthearted in order to write the song well? So he's almost like a writer's block? No. Oof. No. No. Oh. His producers are like, go write this song so that we can sell records. And then he writes the song and he's on all these shows and he's talking about how awful the song is. And it's just to make money. And then at the end, he just like loves his producer, like thanks him. And they're like buddies. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But there's Christmas stuff happening all around. Is it almost like a Christmas is just a background to what's going on in the story? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's a Christmas concert and there's a there's Christmas aspects in okay. it. But to me, it's like there's it doesn't I have I find like in some Christmas horror movies, I find more warm and fuzzy than this movie. This movie it is very like depressing to me. There's other storylines have more Lenny's storyline is super depressing. I, I don't I don't see the appeal of actually uh, it, the first three minutes is very sweet. The the um, first three minutes is this shot of, I think, actual people meeting people at the airport. And it's just like family and then like people who are in love, just like seeing each other at the airport and they're getting all emotional. And then there's this voiceover of Hugh Grant and it's just so sweet. But so it should I'm have been like, a three minute short film. That was it. And I love it. <laughs> I mean, I did. I did I did watch it last night 
for the first time in a couple of years, a few years, and I did get choked up a few times. Okay, but that's just me and that's just gonna happen, okay? But it's still overrated. F you love actually, you're not love actually, you're lust actually, and a lot of you people suck. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> hey, 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 say Tonsies. Do you want to know a real hot take? And I don't know why yes. that, that why I feel like this movie's overrated. It's just I don't see. I kind sure. of think that I kind of think that this movie is good, but mm -hmm. the amount of praise it gets, I'm like, mm. ah, elf. Oh yeah, that that one's a an on the overrated thing for a lot of people. I like the movie. I think yeah. it's, but the people regard it as like a top three best Christmas movie of all time. It's like, no, it's not. Yes. It's funny. It's really funny, but it's so reliant on Will Ferrell. Um, but I have said like, there are some really great things about it. Like I really love that claymation animation thing that you see, you know, like there's some cool yeah. ideas to it. I thought Zoe mm -hmm. Deschanel did, you know, like the singing shower, which is in the shower scene or whatever. And he kind of joins her. Like th there was a lot of funny moments to it, but I feel like it's him carrying the movie a lot which yeah. always to me, it's like, uh, if you have to rely on that and you don't, then it means that the the writing and the story and stuff struggles a little bit, but it is directed by John Favreau, who's a good director. So, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do love John Favreau. And I think the directing is great and everything. And, and it, there's really great things about it. Um, mm -hmm. It does. And I know like for kids, it's really good. And even though the ending is like so super cheese, I was just like, hey, Marie, it's for kids too. It's for kids. It's for kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but I, that is one movie where I don't feel compelled to watch it every single year. It's not like a, a big one on my list. No. Yeah, I, I don't either. And it's like I, I try to there's usually a few go to's, but I try to kind of alternate and rotate Christmas movies so it doesn't otherwise I just become desensitized by them. And then they just don't mm. do anything for me anymore, where it feels almost like a chore that I have to watch them all. Mm. I don't ever want to feel it's called like tradition, that. Daniel. It's called tradition. It's not a chore. It's tradition. It is, but I'm not, but I'm somebody that like loves spontaneity and I love mixing things mm -hmm. up. I don't like being consistent in the same all the time. It gets very um agonizingly boring to me. That's just how I am in life. So I have to change things up every so often if I feel like I'm becoming so routine. If I become so mm. mundane, it becomes like and it's like it's not wow. magical anymore. And the idea behind Christmas is magical. So even though Die Hard, great movie, um, absolutely a Christmas movie, I don't watch it every year for Christmas either. I know some of our other, you know, Nas podcasters like listen to it every year. I don't do that because I like mixing it up a little bit. So Krampus, I've seen maybe three times in my life, about maybe three times. Uh, one that I'm going to watch this year is Black Christmas. It's been a long time since I've seen that one. I want to go back and watch it. Ooh, that movie gives me more warm and fuzzies and love actually i mm. love i love black christmas uh, i know i know so that's one that i want to go back to and of course you're talking about the the remake one of course yeah. oh, the the second remake yeah no you're talking about the third one that's the one you're talking about that's your favorite with the with the with the four, the 90s with four one. girls who yeah <laughs> yeah i'm talking about that yeah it's yeah. so good i'm kidding no the, the only thing with the black christmas if if my recollection is right on that one Yes, it takes place around Christmas, but it doesn't feel very Christmassy. It just feels like a horror movie and Christmas is in the backdrop. Unless I'm wrong. I Again, it's been a long while since I've seen it. I want to jump back into that and watch it. I think it feels Christmassy to me throughout because of the set, like the backdrop. It's the backdrop. so <laughs> it, like everything you see is like it takes place like 80 percent of it takes place where you're surrounded by Christmas decorations and like, I think Christmas music and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I mean, it's also like very unsettling and creepy and horror. So yes, yes, exactly. I, I like that actress that's in it. She was in the made for television it, and she was also in Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, she was in Romeo and Juliet. Watch that in high school. Olivia Hussey. <laughs> what a hussy. Hussy, right? Hussy. Yes, it's hussy. Of course it's hussy. <laughs> Olivia Hussey. Olivia Hussey. If you're going to say Olivia Hussey, if you had to emphasize the Hussey, how would you do it? And Hussie. I do the shimmy Hussie. trick. Olivia Hussey. You got to do Olivia Hussey. You guys get like this shaky hand. <laughs> yes. Do you like that? Huh? Do you like that? The shoulder <laughs> shimmy is the shoulder shimmy with the Hussey. Now I see why she was casted as Juliet. Oh, you do see why she's casted <laughs> as Juliet. You do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do. Just do it. Times two. <laughs>
know what I'm saying? She really shows her hussy in that movie. Just put it, that. it was really uncomfortable to watch it with my grade nine uh, yes. English teacher, Mr. McLeod. Thank you very much for showing us Thank that. Thank you, Mr. McLeod. Uh, we Who knew Olivia Hussey was going to be talked about this much on an episode of Nas? She did phenomenal work in It. Do you remember her in It? Yes, I do. I I always remember every time I remember her in it, it's always when she's in the car and she's looking out and then she's talking. Remember, she's at the gas station and then it's mm -hmm. Petty Wise is doing it. And then she got the big eyes, you know, like the big old lights that's in her eyes. And you see her just staring. It's just coming right at her. The camera. This is really making you chuckle a lot for some reason. Like <laughs> because because her facial expression. I remember being a kid and watching that. And it was just so funny to me. It was hilarious. That's a very hussy performance. Black Christmas. <laughs> When you were first talking about the eyes and the way she was looking, I was going to go back to Christmas. I don't know why. And I'm like, no, why would I say that? <laughs> because it's funny. Randomness. Black Christmas. Black Christmas. <laughs> Olivia Hussey. You're the first one that said Olivia Hussey. So stupid. I can't look at her name and take it seriously because her last <laughs> no. name's Hussey. Yes. Oh she's a and Hussey. It's all barren her biddies and <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. I'm like, you living up to the name. Yeah, she's like under 18, I think. Like, how is that legal? Those when Christmas is a real black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dark times. Those are the dark times. It's the Nas, man, with a gift that keeps on giving. I mean, the gift that keeps on giving every year is so special, but don't, not too much, not every year. You don't want Daniel to get bored because it's so routine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't yeah, give me the exact same thing over and over. We gotta mix it up a little. We gotta throw a little bit of hussy in there. A little bit of hussy in there. <laughs> a little bit of Olivia hussy in there. Now we're talking. Okay, okay. <laughs> Close this out. Got to try. Okay, so what do you guys think? Do you agree or severely disagree with any of us? With with either of us? I, I I'm assuming yes. <laughs> I'm assuming it's gonna be more disagreeing than agreeing, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I I I'm interested to see if there's anyone that agrees with either of us on any of them but mm -hmm. I, I i i would love to get some like backlash on this i i'm we welcome it oh we will we will we won't put you on the naughty list for disagreeing with us we you know we're all for it we're already on the naughty list so if you agree with us you're actually gonna be on the nice <laughs> list so yeah actually thank you for watching this episode of marie plays it all with my first ever side actually. quest with my side piece daniel that was <laughs> there. there you go love actually daniel because you said actually <laughs> Actually, you can find more of our content on our YouTube channel, Not A Strong Start. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Not A Strong Start. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcast. And you can follow me on Instagram at Marie Plays It All. And you can follow Daniel at King underscore Sangre, where you can see more content about Olivia Hussey. Yes. You damn it, Daniel, because I was going to say never stop playing and never stop, never stop Hussying. I don't want to shake too much. <laughs> Should do up more buttons before I do it. Let's we'll see. I'll see it up this Christmas, boys and girls. I'll see it up. <laughs> I, they always tell you anytime you want some extra Mary in your uh, eggnog, throw a little bit of hussy in there. It goes a long mm. way. I'm gonna, next time I get some eggnog, I'll be like, is there hussy in this? You can really taste the hussy. <laughs> and you're just going to stare at them as you're drinking and walking off, and the person's going to be like, what the f is she talking about? Oh, you know, she's like, mm, that hussy's in there. Mm, that hussy. There we go. Black Christmas. Black Christmas. <laughs>